welcome back to another video. This is probably going to be a series. I'm going to use this incredible, incredible paper collection to create a wonderful folio fit for a family tree. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's LJ here and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. So I'm going to be making um, a folio style album but with a family tree theme and I found these beautiful beautiful papers so I have these awesome papers from Scrap Scrap Mir Scrap Mir Scrap Mir M I R um and these are absolutely beautiful so I want to make a family tree style folio so I'll just show you the papers I also have the 8 by 8 yeah I also have them in 8 by 8 and we'll see if they are the same designs I haven't decided what size I'm going to do it yet I love this image I know I want to do it at least 8 inches wide so that I can have this on the front cover because I just think that this is beautiful um, so yeah, let's do the large paper first so we have the beautiful big tree and then we have this gorgeous leaf design on the back. And uh, get this so you can see. So we have two of those. And then we have this sort of slightly Aztec y feel design with this beautiful sort of like tea stained with the flowers on the back. And then, in fact, I'm just going to flip two pages at a time so you can see the front and the back of the same sheet. So then we have this gorgeous framed piece with this stripy piece on the back. Then we have this but blot butterfly, butterfly green sheet with this floral piece with butterflies on with some script in the background, which is stunning. We then have this piece which has a sort of scripty mixed media feel. And then this watercolour effect one. And then on the very back page, it is single sided, we have these cut parts which are beautiful. I love this R Family one. So pretty. So that's the 12 by 12. And let's have a quick look and see if the 8 by 8 is exactly the same. Probably is. So far so good, yes. Yep, then the Aztec with the backing piece, yep. Mixed media with the stripes, yes. And let's do it two at a time. Butterflies with the butterflies. The watercolour with the thing and some smaller cut parts. Beautiful. I also, at the same time, this is the front cover that came with the 12x12 12 12, and I love that it has this family tree on it. Um, a lot of the times you can use these because these are turned. They they may work, like I could do a strip of that piece, but I love the way they've written family tree there, so I'm going to use that as well. But I also have this pack of die cut pieces, which is, well, there's the back. Just show you that, hopefully. I'll get a picture of it as well to make it clearer. Um, so there's just lots of embellishment pieces. You've got butterflies, you've got the wood slices, you've got branches, acorns, floral pieces. Gorgeous. So I'm going to do a family tree style album. Uh, folio, sorry, not album. And basically what I'm going to do is once it's opened flat, I'm just going to have exactly the same on each side. So we're going to make one um, side together and then we're just going to copy the same on the other side because then what my plan would be would be to have whoever is doing their family tree will have a sort of like I'll have one central page if that makes sense and that central page will have so say it was me doing it that central page would have me my children any grandchildren depending on whoever's filling it in and then each side would be mum's side of the family and dad's side of the family. I hope that makes sense. It'll probably make sense more once you see it. So that's what we're going to work on using these gorgeous, gorgeous papers. 
I'm going to have a think about what sort of size I want it. I know I want it to be a large um, portrait style. And I would really love this on the front. So I need it to be... I literally just had my ruler. There it is. I don't know how I lose so many things without touching them. So if I fussy cut this out, then I could do... Be about seven and a quarter if I fussy cut it out if I kept it as the square piece then it would be um, at least an eight inch width and I'm thinking maybe doing eight by ten pages because then I could have this slightly to the side we could wrap the spine nice right let's get started so we are going to have our cover is going to be eight and a half by Ten and a half, and then inside. Hopefully, this is where it will make a bit more sense to you. We're going to have one like fold-out design area here. I'm going to copy that here. They're going to be exactly the same, and then in the centre here, I think we'll just have one single hinge. single hinge maybe that is a fold out page and on this fold out page I'll have me room for children grandchildren and then we'll have say mum side of the family and dad's side of the family here I'm hoping that makes sense and so with this fold out piece what I will have is I'll have the inside as space to write and do the pictures of people and then on the outside of each page i'll probably just put a really nice piece of design paper maybe the tree maybe um one of the other pieces just to have as an extra spot for photos so i'm hoping this makes sense so if this is going to be eight and a half by ten and a half our folio um layout will be 10 by 8 and I think we'll make each one say an inch deep so 1 inch, 2 inch and the spine can be either 2 and a half or three inches what color cardstock do I want to use with this I think do you know I really don't know I think white is going to be too stark against it to say I did white you don't really get the the um you will on some of the other sheets so like if it was the green you could see it but i don't think white's gonna work i don't think white is going to work let's see if black will work now black i think looks lovely both with this side and with that side Okay, might be black, might be craft. No, black, black it is. Now this is exciting, I've not used black as a mini album base before. So I have 
black A4 paper. And the A4 paper is eight and a quarter by 11 and 11 sixteenths. So I think I'm gonna use A4 rather than 12 by 12. I think I can get away with this. It's only the spine, it's only the wrapping the chipboard that's going to be a problem. But I can work around that. Plan. So you don't even need 12 by 12 for this. You can use A4. I have this 160 GSM black A4 card and we are going to start. <laughs> wow, I mean, how has anyone, has anyone ever made as much of a faff opening something as me? Gosh, man. Like, not that hard to open a packet, right? You would think. Okay. So, oh, that is stuck to it. Don't need you. Will be stuck. Go! Righty ho! So, our page, our page is going to be 8 by 10. So, you could also do this 8.5 by 11. Yep, you can also do this with letter paper. For those in America, I'm going to keep this bit. I'm not going to bother keeping this bit. It is too tiny to be of use. Meow, what? 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 Hello? Very cute, yes, yes, that was your box of magnets, yes it is. Well done. <coughs> Cat, seriously, what you doing? Stop putting your bow in my face. Come and have a lie down. Come on, you can't claw a wooden surface. You don't know how many times I have to say this to you. Righty ho. So this is going to be our oh, kitten. <laughs> oh, are you okay? She literally just headbutted my hand. That really hurt my hand. Are you okay? Oh, baby, you okay? <gasps> that really hurt my hand. <gasps> oh, madam, you have a hard head. Now, what are you rubbing up against? Oh. Hello, are you okay? You seem completely non-phased, that's good. My hand is throbbing, but you're okay. That's the main thing, eh? Mm. Hello, baby. Hello. Right, I need to go and take some painkillers because that's really, really painful and it's throbbing and I'm not going to be able to do any work. Are you going to come with me? Come on. Come on. Now are you going to stay here while I go? I'm going to stay here, right? Hey you. Hello. You see you can't dig your... No, nope, don't. Okay. Okay. You come with me. Okay, we are back. We have had some painkillers. We have put some uh, ice on it. And we're still being followed by a kitten. You lie there. That's not a problem. Right, so we have our 8 by 10 back. And we are going to start off with what will be the frontmost. That is a really awful way to word that. 
So basically what we're going to do is we're going to do a top and a bottom flap with an inch gusset on each because we want everything to fit inside this. Um, and it, the easiest way to do it and make sure everything fits is to do an inch gusset or the gusset you want from the back page rather than building on top on top on top on top. Um, stop eating whatever you're trying to eat. Come, why are you damp? Why are you so damp? Have you been in the bath? Or in the sink or something? Oh, kitten. Okay. So we're going to want a piece that is eight wide by... But let's just do an, a four piece of each. Cut it to eight and then we'll score. So we're going to need two of those that are exactly the same. Okie dokie, so we have two. I have scored at one inch and at two inch, so we have a one inch flap and a one inch gusset. So we will burnish these and then we'll stick one top and one bottom of our flap. Okay, so I've folded and burnished both score lines, but we're only going to put glue on that first inch flap. So we're going to put glue on there, stick that to the top. You can just fold the other gusset flat for now just to make it line up. Make sure your sides are straight as always. Burnish that down and then do exactly the same on the bottom. And then our gussets will allow these to not overlap the page below it. Um, they fit on really nicely and these are going to be the very front flaps. Okie dokie. So once these are... internally with all the bits and pieces these will sit nicely and block in our one inch design so I think next we're going to do we're going to do some side flaps and I think we'll do three quarters of an inch whoops I just threw them on the floor if we do three quarters of an inch as a gusset brain, how is this going to work? Let's cut these at 10 and then we'll have a look and see. Oh, okay, I did trim off an extra eighth of an inch, so these are nine and seven eighths, just so that they don't catch on these two score lines. You want to save a tiny bit of space. I'm just going to fold this backwards just for a second so I can see what I'm doing. So, let's do half an inch and half an inch. So we're going to score at half and one. Okay, once we have scored those, I'm just going to fold and burnish them. And in the same way that we did with our one inch, we're only going to put glue on the first half inch flap, and then we're going to stick those to the sides. Now, as I've said, they are about an eighth of an inch shorter, so all you're going to need to do is place it right in the middle between those top and bottom flaps, and making sure that you are not touching either of the score lines. You'll probably have well, be a sixteenth of an inch, like a millimetre, just to avoid those fold lines. So do one either side. Hmm. Okay. So we have put in our half inch flaps as well. So now when I close this from the side, 
we have this half inch piece and then we have this half inch piece as well so on top of these we have space on the back we're going to do a waterfall nice big waterfall that's fine and that is going to be everything underneath these maybe a little pocket on each let's do a little pocket on each so what do we want we want seven and a quarter seven and a quarter eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter by three which is perfect because this page is eight and a quarter i love it when a plan comes together so by three let's cut this at three we're going to need two one for each side one for each flat so there is one there is two Okie dokie. So we have our two little pockets. We're going to put one on each side. Oh, try again. Remember your, uh, you need to stay away from the uh, edge. Gosh, what a good thing this is covered up with design paper, eh? What a good thing. Okay, let's do the other one. We now have the top and bottom flap, and the side flaps that both have a pocket. That one as well. The back is going to have a waterfall on, which we will do shortly. <clears throat> what I do want to do as well is I want to do something on these. Yes, we are going to do a flap flap on both so let's have a quick check this is nine and seven eighths so if we do let's do four and a half whoop Bye. Maybe the whole way. No. So this is seven. This is hard to measure. This is seven and a quarter. Let's do four and a half by seven and a quarter, six and a quarter. 
so seven. Four and a half by seven. Four of those. Okay, I know that took me a little while to work it out. Apparently my brain was not wanting to calculate that day. So these are just going to be our flaps. So we want enough space for a photo plus a half inch flap to attach it to our page. And so you want four of those, two for each side. And they will hold a four by six photo, which is pretty much the standard um, everywhere, I believe, not just in the UK. What is it, madam? What is it you need? What is it you need? It's going to blow kisses at you. Wait, squeaky, what? Wait. What is it? What is that? Thanks, thanks, thanks for that. Yes, 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 yes. It's lovely, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, love. Yep, yep, yep. You're so lovely. Right, okay, so I'm just going to fold the front flaps back. Just so they are out of our way. I'm going to start on this one. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have a flap that opens this way and a flap that opens this way. Like so, on here. Okay? So we're just going to line them up, figure out where we want them, and do that. And to do it... Hold it the other way, in fact, so that I can lie them flat, like so. And then here I can figure out where we are going. And I think for both we're going to have this way. And definitely on this side we're going to have this way. So, let's fold you in. This is the nice thing about doing all of this outside of the actual book. So these are four and a half did I do? My brain is melting. Four and a half. So that's nine and we have nine and three quarters. So quite easily, so I have a pencil anywhere. There it is. What we will do is we will come in. quarter of an inch and we'll do the same here and then there'll be a quarter of an inch at the top quarter of an inch at the bottom and just over a quarter of an inch in between them and we're going to go right up to the outside edge and just shy of that score line for a second there the quarter inch pencil mark so we are just going to avoid that let's just check that we are at a quarter of an inch all the way along which we are perfect wonderful is that moved Just my eyes went funny. Do the same down here. Line up with the edge. Like so. 
We are a quarter of an inch away. Mm, we are coming in slightly, so we need to pull, pull that in. Ever so slightly like so. Much better. Lovely. So now, so that you can see, when we open these, we have this. Do we do the same on the other one or do we do the opposite? I think we do the opposite. So we can fold all of these up again. So this one is going on this edge. Do you ever just have moments where you can't compute inside right perfect that's all i needed to know so the top one is going here okay so now we have our large front uh, top and bottom flaps on our left flap we have a left and a right and on the right we have a left and a right inside pockets back's going to be the waterfall i'm thinking these need magnets just to keep them from flipping and flapping around. So I'm going to add magnets and I'll be right back. So we have our up flap. I'm just going to leave blank these ones because I want them to be able to be written on or put um, <clears throat> photos, things like that. So we then have our flaps with our pocket and our flaps with our pocket. I'm going to do a nice big waterfall on the back here. So on this bottom piece, let's, there we go. So we have this piece which is eight, eight by nine and three quarters. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a staggered waterfall so that each one gets larger. Nine and a half. Eight, seven. Okay. Nine and a half by seven. and a half by seven. Seven and a half by seven. and a half by seven. Five and a half by seven. Okay. Let's start with this. seven inch side there we go like so <laughs> now we need a quarter of an inch off each of those okay so these are all with a width of seven they start off at nine and a quarter then we have eight and a quarter seven and a quarter six and a quarter five and a quarter I've then scored a half inch along the um, extendable length, so they're all seven width, 
and they've each got a half inch gusset on the opposite measurement and just starting with the largest one I'm just going to glue down that half inch flap at the top leaving a nice border all the way around the top bottom sides then so that's our nine and a quarter now our eight and a quarter we are just going to fold the gusset and stick it directly on top of where we stuck the first one so as you can see it just shows that inch shorter at the bottom this way you don't have any tension on gussets or any paper pulling over each other or trying to make sure things fold flat because each flap is on top of the previous flap doesn't cause any tension or stress in those places so you could have as I've done these which have an inch between them so they've got quite a large um, change in size you could do double the amount of pages and have half inch gussets you could go even shorter than I go uh, so my shortest is five and a quarter which when I've stuck the half inch down gives me four and three quarters so it's up to you, you could go even shorter you could adjust this in a variety of ways this is just the sizings that I chose to use because I wanted to use a wider gap it's normally only sort of half an inch but I wanted to do a full inch I then just cut one of my scrap pieces or I got one of my scrap pieces I have figured out where I want to score it I've rounded the edges and I'm just going to stick it on the bottom and this is going to be like our closure so it's just going to be a flap that we stick on and then we close that with a magnet to the top flap of our waterfall so I'm just using one of my sort of 10 mil 10 by 1 mil magnets here sticking it onto the page first and then I'm going to attach it to the strip if I can find my hook just put a little bit of tape on the back so that it sticks nicely then put it on and attach some tape over the top you want to do it that way so that you don't end up with tape where you don't need it okie dokie so we have our layered waterfall here where the piece goes larger and also you have them on the back as well which I have closed with a magnet so that's going to be our bottom piece here I think I might just leave the top blank yeah I'm going to leave the top blank I'm going to put some magnets on here and we're going to do three large ones I think so as with all my magnets all I do is I place the first one on with a bit of tape just position it where I want it so on this one I'm going to use three large ones and then I put uh, a magnet on top of it that is attracted to it so I know which way up it's going to go then I put a piece of tape underneath the top magnet without turning it over so it's still magnetized to the one below it it's just got some tape sticking up underneath it and then when I close it it will stick to the top so to make this square what I'm going to do I'm going to remove all of these inside pieces just get rid of them behind and we're going to put it on its side so I'm going to make sure this is flush this is so what you want to do is just make sure that your gussets are straight I'm standing on its side so that it is flat so we know that each side is going to be level and then you just want to make sure that your top and bottom gussets are perpendicular so you've got your nice right angles so then it will close nicely in a square I did mess it up at first then I did it again and it fits really nicely together. Okay, so we have our first part. Again, from the sides, it will stand up neater when we have paper on it. So we have our top flap, blank. This is a nice large blank piece. We come down. At the bottom we have our waterfall. In the centre we have these two pieces. So this has a flap and a flap with a pocket on the back. This has a flap and a flap with a pocket on the back. Back here we are going to do a nice large pull down waterfall. No, we're not going to do a pull-down waterfall because this will be in the way. We're just going to do a standard waterfall. Right, so I have created an 8 by 10 piece of print paper just so that I can plan out my sizings for 
photos. Just going to do a standard waterfall. So we're going to have six and a half, which is fine. So our pieces are going to be six and a half. by five and so if we finish here so we can have so one two three four five six six pieces at six and a half by five so I've cut my pieces out and I'm just going to do what's called a dry fit. So what you do is you take the pieces that you've prepared and you put them up into the location and see how they fit. I do the same thing with design paper before I stick it down or any sort of layout that you're not sure of. So with this I wanted to maximise the amount of photo space. Because it's for a family tree you want to have as much space as possible for photos of your family that you find. So I laid these six pieces out and realised that actually I could use more than that. So what I did was I just got a few more and I kept putting them on there until I figured out the right size. And then you're going to need to make a second one of these. And pop those in there. And we're going to make a second one. So once you've made your second piece, come back and join me for the next video. Thank you very much for spending time with me today, guys. Keep crafting and I'll see you all soon. Bye.